Welcome back, everybody, to stop five of my Summer Abroad series. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at a film that takes place in Sweden called Midsummer, the director's cut, though. In case you don't know what Midsummer is about, it's about a couple who travels to northern Europe to visit a rural hometown's fabled Swedish Midsummer Festival. What begins as an idyllic retreat quickly devolves into an increasingly violent and bizarre competition at the hands of a pagan cult. I don't think I have any specific... Oh, I guess I have one note that has to do with the director's cut. To start off, the opening montage of wilderness shots are, in my mind, a perfect way to start the film and to showcase the isolation of the community that the film takes place in later on in the film. The music fits perfectly. Cinematography overall is awesome. I think you can probably get where this review is going where I absolutely love the film. The framing is great. There are some mirror shots and if you've been following my reviews for a while you know I love a good mirror shot. The set design is great. I love the art that is in Danny's apartment. Now I can't remember exactly what the art is thinking back on the film. It might have something to do with the film. I'd have to re-watch it and take a closer look at it. The transitions are great and they flow perfectly from scene to scene. I think it's more match cuts that they use. I'm not 100% sure. Overall it's well written. One thing I really liked was how the mushroom trip is interestingly shot and edited to showcase the feeling as if maybe the audience as well is experiencing this mushroom trip. I thought that was a very cool way to shoot the, uh, that sequence and the overall editing. The aerial cinematography is great. There is some focus pulling that's in the film. I found that to be perfect. I know how hard it is to actually properly do that. The camera movement is great. I think it was more of like a transition sequence. I wrote down the dinner scene. I should have elaborated on it, but the first dinner scene in the film, I guess I liked how the camera was moving in the scene. One thing I noticed that each food scene, so there's the berries and then there's the breakfast, it's all set up as different runes. When we see like the overhead shot, which I thought was an interesting touch. And I wonder if all those rune scenes that you see from above, I wonder if they translate to something in regard to the story. Probably is an interesting thing to look at on my next watch through. One thing I noticed that I don't think I noticed before was that Danny's blanket when she's at the commune or in the community is kind of similar but not exactly the same pattern from the carpet in The Shining. I thought that was a nice reference and if it was a reference to The Shining I like how some films are doing it, the references in more creative ways as opposed to you see like the carpet design on a wall or something and it's like yeah, there's the reference. I like how some films are being more creative with how they reference the film. The wide, drawn out shots work perfect in establishing each of the scenes. And again, this is something like if you've been following my reviews, I like the drawn out shots in some movies because they establish, they work so well and they establish the scenes very well. and. It's the only way they probably could have shot the scene to deliver that same emotional impact or something like that. The effects are trippy during the hallucinatory scenes, whereas I thought it was a, a unique way for them to shoot it because the main focus of it was on the characters. But then if you look in the background, it's all wavy and out of focus. I thought that was very cool, how they achieved that without making the foreground stuff wavy. Uh, I'd love to figure out how to do that. The audio mix is actually unique, and 
I was actually watching with headphones and I noticed that in the dancing sequence, maybe in the last half of the film, it transitions between the left and right. Now, I don't think you'd be able to pick up on that in like a theater setting, which is where I actually first saw the film and I didn't notice it then, but I thought that was really cool. I don't know if that was specific to the director's cut or not, but regardless, like it transitions very well and not many films actually employ that technique. So it's almost as if the character is dancing around you and the music is happening around you and you're in that scene. The additional scenes add to the mythology and feel natural within the story. Like there's an extra, the one that comes to mind now is a scene where one of the people from the community, one of the kids, I guess you could say, offered themselves to be a sacrifice in a drowning or drowning ritual or something like that. And that causes a fight between Danny and Christian. Now, I'm not sure if the fight was in the director's cut only or if it was also in the theatrical cut, but it did add a bit of context if it was not in the theatrical cut. So yeah, they just add to the film and feel natural. Like I didn't even notice which scenes they were until after when I looked it up. Maybe that's because I didn't remember. Now, I have one note here I'm not even sure where it takes place but and I don't know how to make sense of it but Danny's nightmare there's black smoke yeah I'm not sure maybe the black smoke had something to do with how Danny's sister and parents died but I'm not entirely sure and I did try my hardest to pick out the I guess you could say ghosts in the film uh, that the director hid uh, within the landscape and I didn't pick up one. <laughs> Even though I've seen some of them before, I still didn't pick it up. So I guess I do have to rewatch it at some point, just so I could pick up on those scenes. If I had to give Midsommar, the director's cut, a rating, probably not much different than the theatrical cut, I would give this film a 10. Now, unfortunately, the only way to actually see the director's cut is to purchase the film on Apple TV and with uh, that version you actually get three different copies of the film you get the theatrical you get the 4k one I believe and then you get the director's cut so it's well worth the the purchase and then you get some extra scenes and stuff like that but hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next stop is actually in Slovakia yeah, I heard some guy that's um, <laughs> very famous in Japan is actually in the film. No, um, it's the film Hostel. And yeah, I found that to be a little bit more brutal than I remember. But overall, very good. Stay tuned for the sixth stop on my Summer Abroad series. And I'll see you in that one when it comes out.